Right. Uh, Buckingham Palace then has been accused by the, the Daily Mail today. Here it says, why did Palace cover up truth on Queen? Uh, accusing the, the uh, royal family of uh, misleading, or at least Buckingham Palace, of misleading the nation regarding the Queen's health. Uh, Her Majesty visiting hospital on Wednesday, staying overnight for tests. But because of that overnight stay, an arranged visit to Northern Ireland was cancelled without ac explanation from the palace. Yeah, it was then confirmed that she'd visited hospital over 24 hours later. So let's discuss this some more uh, and talk about this supposed cover-up with the royal journalist and author, Robert Johnson. Uh, Robert, really good to get you on the Great British Breakfast this morning. Thanks for joining us this Saturday. Look, is this Pleasure. really um, as serious as perhaps the Mail and, and some of the other papers would have us believe, that this is really about dishonesty, that we were misled, or were courtiers simply trying to protect Her Majesty in some way? Way, perhaps a little bit clumsily. A bit of both, really, as well. I mean, the fact is, um, you know, you, you, over 30 years covered this beat, you, you learn to listen and gauge what the palace is saying, but you don't expect them to, uh, to actually lie. I mean, the reason for that is because, obviously, the, you know, the most important thing is the Queen is, is in, in fine fettle, it seems. But the, the reason for that, of course, is that they shouldn't say that she is somewhere else resting when she's actually in hospital having tests. I mean, she's the head of state, there's a responsibility there and a, a clear breach of trust. But I understand why they did it. Um, the, the fact is they didn't want TV cameras and, and, and photographers outside the hospital and what was effectively a routine test that went on longer. Uh, the Queen is entitled to her uh, patient confidentiality and it was just more convenient for her to stay overnight in the, in the hospital. But I think really the most important thing here is that... Um, the, the full picture wasn't given, and I, I think in this this time of twenty four hour news, the reality is somebody is going to find out about it. You know, everyone's got their mobile phones and everything. Someone's going to find out. The Queen's in the hospital. All the staff in the hospital would have known that when the, the the newspapers were reporting or the television were reporting that she's at home at Windsor, she's actually not. And so, they've, therefore, it's it's a daft thing to do, at the very least. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's very responsible either because it creates a sense that they're trying to cover up something that may not be, um, that may be worse than, you know, may not be as bad as people are now going to assume. Why are they covering it up? Is there something really bad going on here that we should know about? So I think they've probably made a mistake. I think it's a little bit uh, also unfair journalistically because if you're told by the palace and you trust them that the Queen is in uh, at home resting, you don't make other inquiries. And all the time when the palace says something, you continue to make other inquiries with other people other than the palace press office um, because you want to check that, you know, that, that the truth is actually out there. But you stop if they say she's definitely resting. Yeah, it arouses sus uh, suspicion, doesn't it? And, you, and I think the key word you used there was trust. A sacred trust. Yeah, it's a clear breach right. of trust. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I've not been... Uh, I've covered this beat for 30 years and, you know, I, I've not been lied to by Buckingham Palace, I don't think, in, in the past. And I think this was a silly thing to do because, you know, the next time somebody tells me at the Palace, oh, no, she's absolutely fine, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to believe it. And so, you know, I do think that there's responsibility as a, if she's the head of state, not only of this country, but of, of 16 different realms. You know, the, the bottom line, line is there's constitutional implications here if a prime minister goes into hospital we're told so i do think that uh, it was naive and i think the time of checking flagpoles and all that has got to stop i think what we need now is a much more robust and, and grown-up way of dealing with this and a clear pattern so that the journalists and the palace can rebuild trust because frankly you know if i'm told one thing i'll probably believe another and continue to to check with other sources um yeah about the stories going forward. In this instance, the Sun knew about it uh, and obviously put it to the palace and well done on them. But the point is other journalists stopped making inquiries. And, and if we'd received a phone call saying the Queen was in the hospital, then we would probably, you know, we would have probably not bothered necessarily chasing it up. You think, oh, well, that might not be true because the palace had categorically said she's at Windsor Castle. That's the, that's the mistake they made. And I hope they don't do it again. And as you mentioned, you know, checking flagpoles, the flag there, the royal standard, remained 
at full mast, even though she was actually in central London being treated or, or undergoing these tests. And as you say, well, that, yeah, I mean, they, that's and exactly that right. Well. I mean, we're told that, that, that that's exactly right. And the fact is, we're told that it's always fly when she's she's there, etc. Et actually, technically, you know, it's not. She, it doesn't always have to be the case. But, you know, we've got to stop that system now. We're in the 21st century, um, a little bit more grown up behaviour from Buckingham Palace and stop looking back. We're not 50 years ago. Thankfully, you know, London Bridge hasn't fallen down. The Queen's in <laughs> fine fettle. So hopefully she'll be at the um, uh, G20, uh, the COP26 conference in Glasgow. But if she's not and the Palace say, oh, she's in good spirits, people are not going to believe them, are they? Yeah. So it's, it's a question of, you know, they ought to be careful what they do because this is, I think, irresponsible by them. And it's something that's not happened um, to me after covering the beat for 30 years. I think it's, it's a stupid thing to do. Yeah, and look, you mentioned as a joke there, London Bridge is still standing, but of course there are all these code words that are used not only by the palace, but yeah. also by journalists. We kind of have an understanding, don't we, behind the scenes, that there is the potential for things to escalate when discussed in the public domain. Surely there needs to be a protocol or a plan then from these courtiers or their press communications department with us journalists to say, look, Her Majesty, the Queen's entitled to some privacy, she's gone to hospital, we don't want to talk about it, but, you know... There has to be a better way, is what I'm trying to say. There has to be a better way, as well. that's right. But the point of it is, I do believe, and I agree that the Queen is entitled to medical privacy. Of course she is. She's a, um, as, you know, she's a you know, person as well as an individual, as well as a member of the, uh, as, as their head of state. But the fact is, if she stays overnight in a hospital, you cannot put out a statement which misguides journalists and the media to say she's resting at home at Windsor Castle. Because that is, frankly, I mean, and there's no other better way of putting it, it's a barefaced lie. Yeah. And therefore, your trust is breached uh, going forward. So now that trust has been breached. There needs to be a clear yeah. mandate now going forward. Forget all these flagpoles and actually forget all these yeah. daft, silly code You're words so now right. because everyone's. That's all been written about. Have a Robert responsible Johnson. way of dealing with it. Sorry to